We want to begin with our coverage of the coronavirus. Active cases and hospitalizations are down in the natural state this morning. This is more than 1,000 new cases and 19 new deaths were reported yesterday. There are 1,223 people in COVID units across the state. That's 23 fewer than on Saturday. Active cases across the state stand at more than 23,000 this morning. That's down by 376. And people battling the virus on the ventilator is up to 337. This is an increase of four from Saturday. The COVID testing drive through clinic at Washington Regional will be closed today. This is in observance of the Labor Day holiday. The hospital system says the location on North Hills Boulevard will reopen tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. In Oklahoma, the State Department of Health reported more than 3,300 new cases and 30 new deaths on Friday. Officials are tracking more than 22,000 active cases. We are expecting an update on those numbers later on today. Health officials fear that holiday travel and large crowds from football games and concerts over the weekend could lead to a surge in new COVID cases. The country already seeing 13 times the number of infections there were in June, and more than 1,000 people are dying from COVID every day. The Delta variant is driving the national average caseload back up to nearly 150,000 infections a day, which is 13 times what it was back in June. Today I'm taking care of a man in his mid 40s. He's unvaccinated, who's an otherwise healthy person who's now in here dying with COVID. The country is seeing more than 1,100 deaths from COVID every day. This is up 131% in just the last month. We'll have more COVID coverage in a moment, but first, early voting begins this week for several special elections in Benton County. 4029's Martin Larimore is joining us live in Pea Ridge this morning with what voters need to know. Good morning, Martin. Time is 604 and as the holiday weekend nears its end, many people will hit the roadways to head back home. AAA is urging drivers to stay safe and be responsible. Last year over this four day holiday weekend, there were 502 crashes in Oklahoma. Six people died, five of those were alcohol and or drug related. So have a plan, have a designated driver, plan an Uber, According to AAA, last year over this four day holiday weekend, there were 502 crashes in Oklahoma and six people died. Five of those were alcohol or drug related. Many of you are going to be firing up your grills today and what's Labor Day without the smell of a cookout or bonfires. But fire crews say you do want to practice caution when you're out there celebrating. They say they typically see more calls over the holiday and another big reminder, stay hydrated. Always keep an eye out for your friends. You know, if you see them kind of getting dizzy, uh, feeling like they need to get some, some colder air, you need to watch out for them. Uh Another big reminder, of course, never drink and drive. They say you should especially be careful when you're out on the roads today. Time is now 6.05 and we want to get a check of the roads with Laura Huckabee. Well, people are still picking up the pieces after Hurricane Ida left a trail of destruction in its wake. We'll tell you how many people are still without power this morning. And three key COVID era unemployment programs set to expire today. What experts say could happen next. A brother of a New York firefighter who died on 9-11 is walking hundreds of miles to honor the lives lost that day. 34-year-old Stephen Siller was one of the thousands of people who died on that horrific day. He was a father of five and a hero. His brother Frank has dedicated his life to making sure no one ever forgets. And I want young Americans to realize what happened. So I'm walking from the Pentagon to Shanksville to Ground Zero, the three locations that we had such unbelievable loss of life. Well, it's called the Never Forget Walk. He started out on August 1st at the Pentagon, and he's set to reach ground zero on September 11th. The Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah begins tonight at sundown. We'll tell you how local congregations are celebrating while hoping to keep people safe from the spread of COVID-19. Welcome back. Time is 614. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and his husband Chastin are now parents. They posted pictures with their two new babies. Buttigieg became the first openly gay uh, U.S. Cabinet Secretary earlier this year after vying for the Democratic presidential nomination in 2020. Supporters credit Buttigieg with shattering political barriers for the LGBTQ community. Well, it is shaping up to be a beautiful Labor Day, but what about the rest of the week? For all those details, we got to head to meteorologist Laura Huckabee. And Laura, it's just going to be hot, right? Looking forward to it. Thanks, Laura. Well, one week after Hurricane Ida first made landfall, communities are still picking up the pieces. The exact death toll is still unknown, while some in the Northeast hold out hope for those still missing in floodwaters. More than half a million customers in Louisiana are still without power, and it could be weeks before it's restored. I know there are a lot of people out there who are in fact hurting. Please 
take advantage of cooling shelters if you can. Uh, run your generators if you have them, but do it safely. Dozens are confirmed dead in at least six states, including more than two dozen in New Jersey alone. Tens of thousands of people who fled South Lake Tahoe in the path of a wildfire are now being allowed back home as crews contain the flames. Some 22,000 people were forced to flee last week as the Calder fire approached the California Nevada border. Fire officials say easing winds helped reduce the fire spread in recent days. However, authorities are warning those with health problems to stay away because of the smoky air still remaining. The Taliban says they've taken control of the last holdout of anti-Taliban forces. Thousands of Taliban fighters overran eight districts north of Kabul overnight. The anti-Taliban fighters had been led by the country's former vice president and son of an anti-Taliban fighter who died in a suicide bombing just days before 9-11. Well, today, three COVID-era unemployment programs have ended, cutting aid to an estimated 7.5 million Americans. This includes the $300 a week federal payment and this follows an underwhelming August jobs report that saw 500,000 fewer jobs added than expected. What tends to happen after um, benefits like these expire is the unemployment rate falls more than expected. That's because people had to be actively looking for a job to receive those weekly checks. Critics of the enhanced benefits say the extra money discourages people from getting back to work, while the Biden administration is calling on states to use emergency COVID funds to provide additional benefits. At least $5 trillion have gone toward getting the U.S. economy through the pandemic. But a new watchdog report explains how roughly $100 billion went to the wrong people. 4029's Christopher Salas is in our Washington bureau and brings us those findings. The programs that saw the most fraud were some of the largest. Unemployment insurance, traditionally the most risky, lost more than $80 billion and more than $3 billion potentially in ineligible PPP and small business loans that were funded. You can view the lessons learned report. This is online at the website here on your screen, pandemicoversight.gov. The Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah begins tonight at sundown, and now the Jewish community has a new facility to worship in. After delays due to COVID-19, Chabad of Northwest Arkansas has officially opened their new synagogue in Bentonville, just in time to celebrate the Jewish New Year. We spoke with the rabbi about what COVID safety protocols they're taking as their congregation celebrates a new year amid the pandemic. The good thing about this year versus last year is that people kind of know what to do. Everyone's used to it, unfortunately. So people are much more comfortable in their masks and with a little bit of distance. So I anticipate more people will come to services because we know how to do it properly. Everyone's vaccinated. It eases, pe eases people's stress a little bit. And well, face masks will not be required, but encouraged instead. Rosh Hashanah services begin tonight at 715 and there will be outdoor services tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Starting this week, Bentonville schools will host lunch and learns to educate students and teachers about online criminal activity. This is a collaboration with Benton County Sheriff's Cyber Crimes Unit. Superintendent Dr. Debbie Jones says they'll talk about how easily accessible online criminal activity is for high school students. On Wednesday, the district will host the first discussion at Bentonville West. And then on Wednesday, September 15th, that discussion will be held at Bentonville High School. It is Labor Day, which means some time with the family and fun in the sun. We have a couple ideas for how you can spend your day all coming up right after the break. Welcome back. Time is 624. Labor Day means the last day of summer for so many folks, and that includes your final day of checking out some water activities. In Centerton, it's the last day of the season at the Splash Pad at McKessick Station. The park is located behind the Wendy's and Moe's off Allen Road. The Splash Pad will close tonight at 8 p.m. The Prairie Grove Clothesline Fair kicked off on Saturday, and the fair is technically over, but you still have some time to join in on the fun today. It all wraps up with a square dancing competition this afternoon. Battlefield Park is hosting the event in partnership with the Prairie Grove Lions Club. This week, you can fall in love with Arkansas art. That's this month's theme for Art on the Bricks Art Walk in Rogers. There's going to be 20 to 25 indoor and outdoor art exhibits, as well as some live music. That'll be this Thursday from 4.30 to 7 p.m. And before we head to break, we do have some furry good news for you this morning. Twin baby pandas were born this summer. They're getting some weight and some fur. Check out this video. I just can't stop staring. The babies were born at a zoo in France. They're being nursed by their mother, their mother Juan Juan. 
and their eyes aren't open just yet. But zookeepers say the babies and mom are in excellent health and mostly doing what pandas love best, which is sleeping. And I definitely don't blame them. Want to get a check of the rose with Laura and Laura. We're pretty sure a lot of folks are out there sleeping today too, right? It's been almost 20 years since September 11th, one of the most pivotal points in our nation's history. The anger that's still present for the families of the fallen, even decades later. Live, local, late breaking, this is 4029 News Sunrise. Labor Day holiday travel is fueling fears of another COVID surge. A warning from health officials as many take to the skies. Early voting starts tomorrow for several Benton County special elections. We'll tell you what's on the ballot. And as the 20th anniversary of 9-11 nears, many family members of victims still dealing with the anger of losing their loved ones. We'll hear their stories. Well, good morning and thanks for waking up with us. I'm Jamie Weiss. Happy Labor Day. It should be a nice day to get out and enjoy the holiday. Let's check in with 4029 meteorologist Laura Huckabee for a check of the holiday forecast. Good morning, Laura. We want to begin our morning with our COVID coverage. Governor Asa Hutchinson says the next few weeks will show the impact from the Labor Day weekend. And as for the numbers, Arkansas saw more than 1,000 new cases yesterday. Active cases did drop by 376. However, 19 more people have lost their lives to the virus. There are 23 fewer COVID hospitalizations. This Labor Day, many Americans are enjoying the last days of summer amid urgent concerns about the pandemic. With nearly 38 million Americans expected to travel for the holiday, health officials are concerned about the spread of COVID among the unvaccinated. They're urging anyone who's not received the shot to stay home. This is cases continue to surge. The U.S. seeing an average of more than 1,100 people die from COVID per day. This is up 131% in the last month. First and foremost, if you are unvaccinated, um, we would recommend not traveling. We can't be having 150,000 new infections per day. That's pandemic numbers. That's the first thing. We've got to crack that one right away. Well, after last year's Labor Day weekend, between mid-September and Thanksgiving, the country saw its daily case average increase by more than 400 percent. The COVID testing drive through clinic at Washington Regional will be closed today. That's the clinic that's located on North Hills Boulevard. The hospital system says their location will reopen tomorrow morning at 10. This Labor Day, millions of Americans will wake up without a job and without federal unemployment benefits. Today, the COVID-19 pandemic unemployment benefits are expiring in the 26 states that were still handing them out, cutting aid to an estimated seven and a half million Americans. This comes on the heels of a disappointing monthly jobs report that showed the U.S. adding the least amount of positions since January. We're still in a pandemic. The idea of being close to hundreds of strangers a day, even while being vaccinated. That's not something that appeals to me in any way. COVID resurgence, which has affected the, you know, translated to bad job numbers, Afghanistan, fires, hurricanes. That's a lot all at one time. The U.S. economy is still 5.3 million jobs below where it was in February of 2020, just before COVID-19 was a, declared a pandemic. We're taking a look at the numbers in Oklahoma. The State Department of Health reported more than 3,300 new COVID-19 cases on Friday. Officials are tracking more than 22,000 active cases there, and we do know that a new report is expected to be released today. Time is 6.33, and starting tomorrow, early voting begins for several special elections in Bend County. 4029's Martin Larimore joins us live in Pea Ridge this morning with what voters need to know. Good morning, Martin. Well, time is now 6.35, and we want to get a check of the roads with Laura Huckabee. Pea Ridge police still need your help finding a 17-year-old girl. Heidi Nicole Miller was last seen Saturday, August 21st in Pea Ridge. Heidi has blue eyes and strawberry blonde hair. She's 5'3 and weighs between 150 and 170 pounds. If you have any information, you're asked to call police at the number you see listed right here on your screen. To LaFleur County now, where households around Spiro, Bacoshi, and Panama may be experiencing low to no water. This is because of a water main break. LaFleur County Rural Water, number 14's office, says that they do have technicians working to repair it. This is a developing story, and we will continue to monitor the situation for you. This morning, officials say evacuees are stuck at an Afghanistan airport. The latest on this, plus a dire prediction from the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. 
Coming up tonight on 4029 News, you can catch a new episode of Bachelor in Paradise at 7 o'clock. That's followed by The Ultimate Surfer at 9. And make sure you stick around for our newscast tonight at 10. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This Saturday marks the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. On that day in 2001, a group of 19 men hijacked four planes that intentionally crashed into the World Trade Center towers and the Pentagon. Another plane went down outside of Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Almost 3,000 people died that day in New York City, Washington, and in Pennsylvania. President Biden and the First Lady will commemorate the day by traveling to all three sites of the terror attacks. The morning of September 11, 2001 remains one of the most pivotal points in American history. One study which tracked the negative emotions in the aftermath of 9-11 showed that the wrath and anger were present in the moments after the attack and increased steadily that the more Americans learned about the tragedy. For families of the fallen who endured the horrors up close, the anger is still present even decades later. ABC's Morgan Norwood has their story. Time is 642 and now to Afghanistan this morning, a standoff at an airport in the northern region after reports that the Taliban is blocking planes, not allowing Americans to leave. The White House now says that there is about 100 Americans still in the country awaiting evacuation. This is General Mark Milley warns that a resurgence of terrorism in Afghanistan is, quote, very likely. They're not going to allow American citizens to leave until they get full recognition from the United States of America. The conditions are very likely, and I've testified this and I've said it in public, uh, that you could see a resurgence of terrorism coming out of that general region within 12, 24, 36 months. The State Department, while not confirming that there's Americans on those planes, says they will hold the Taliban to their pledge to let people freely depart Afghanistan. More than 50 tons of medical aid and food products have arrived in Kabul this weekend, and officials say the shipments came from Qatar and Bahrain. Additionally, the head of the International Committee of the Red Cross has arrived in Afghanistan, and he will stay for three days in the country. Ida is now the deadliest tropical system to hit the U.S. in the last four years. The latest on the recovery efforts in the region. If you're fortunate enough to be off on this Labor Day, why not curl up with a good book? Today is National Read a Book Day. It falls every year on September 6th, so pick up a new book or why don't you reread an old favorite? Besides it being relaxing, there are plenty of health benefits. Reading helps reduce stress and improves memory and concentration. And while I would normally say go pick up a book and read, it sounds like today is probably a really good day, Laura, to get out and enjoy uh, the final couple days of summer, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, time is 646, and a reminder that the Pea Ridge Black pad will not be open today after it was vandalized. Pea Ridge officers say security footage taken last Monday shows 23 year old Tanner Cole Graham man tampering with a sensor that turns on water. Police say man told them he thought the sensor was already damaged and he was trying to fix it. He'll be arraigned on September 14th and if found guilty, man will have to pay the city for all of the damage. Starting this week, Bentonville schools will host lunch and learns to educate students and teachers about online criminal activity. This is a collaboration with the Benton County Sheriff's Cyber Crimes Unit. Superintendent Dr. Debbie Jones says they'll talk about how easily accessible online criminal activity is for high school students. On Wednesday, the district will host the first discussion at Bentonville West. And then on Wednesday, September 15th, the discussion will be held at Bentonville High School. One week after Ida came ashore as a Category 4 hurricane in Louisiana, more than half a million people are still without power. Ida left a path of destruction all the way to the northeast, claiming the lives of at least 68 people across eight states. New Jersey is seeing the greatest loss of life with at least 27 killed by the storm. Officials in the Gulf say some of the hardest hit areas could be without power until the end of September. We know there are a lot of people out there who are in fact hurting. Uh, and, and we're going to continue to work hard every single day to bring additional relief and to make progress. President Biden got a firsthand look at some of that devastation in Louisiana on Friday. Tomorrow, he'll travel to some of the hard hit areas in New Jersey and New York. Don't forget, you can help those hurricane victims as well. You can give to the American Red Cross right now by visiting our website. 4029 is partnering with them to gather donations for recovery efforts. Just head to 4029tv.com and click on the article you see right here on your screen. Time is 648. We have to turn to sports now because it was a winning weekend for the Hogs. Arkansas football claiming their first victory of the 2021 season over Rice. It wasn't perfect, but the boys got it done, taking over the second half to finish at 38 to 17. Sam Pittman earning his fourth win as the head hog, and you just got to say it, 
Whoop big suey. And for the first time since 2017, Razorback Stadium is going to be filled to the brim. This weekend, it is full capacity in Fayville for hogs and longhorns, and I promise I didn't wear burnt orange on purpose. The game is a sellout, but Arkansas is selling a limited number of standing room only tickets. This will be their first meeting in Fayville since 2004, and don't forget, it's a stripe out. Either wear red or white, depending on your section. We have a map that's on our website, 4029tv.com. And don't forget, our sports team is going to be getting you a Razorback ready for that big game against Texas. Our 30-minute Hog Wild pregame special is kicking off at a special time this week. That's going to be Thursday night at 6.30, right after 4029 News at 6. Tonight marks the start of Rosh Hashanah, also known as the Jewish New Year. As millions of Jews across the globe prepare to observe the holiday, members of the Jewish community in Northwest Arkansas are reflecting on how COVID-19 has impacted their congregation and how they hope to move forward together in this new year. My wish for this year is that the world heal quickly and we don't just go back to normal or to a new normal, but for a much better normal, one which is filled with purpose, meaning, connection, faith, and community. Chabad of Northwest Arkansas just opened a brand new synagogue at the end of August, and this is where high holiday services will be held. Face masks are not required, but encouraged. Rosh Hashanah services begin tonight at 7.15, and there will be outdoor services held Tuesday at 7. Still to come, early voting for special elections in Benton County begin tomorrow. We'll tell you what's on the ballot right after this. Time is 6.53 and early voting begins this week for several special elections in Benton County. 4029's Martin Larmore joins us live in Pea Ridge this morning with what voters need to know. Good morning, Martin. In our coverage of the coronavirus, active cases and hospitalizations are down in the natural state this morning. This is more than 1,000 new cases and 19 new deaths were reported yesterday. There are 1,223 people in COVID units across the state. That's 23 fewer than on Saturday. Active cases stay at more than 23,000 this morning, but that is down by 376 people. People battling the virus on the ventilator is up to 337. Now this is an increase of four people from Saturday. The COVID testing drive through clinic at Washington Regional is going to be closed today in observance of the Labor Day holiday. The hospital system says the location on North Hills Boulevard will reopen tomorrow morning at 10. In Oklahoma, the State Department of Health reported more than 3,300 new COVID-19 cases and 30 new deaths on Friday. Officials are tracking more than 22,000 active cases right now, and we are expecting an update on those numbers later today. Health officials fear that holiday travel and large crowds from football games and concerts over the weekend could lead to a surge in new COVID cases. The country already seeing 13 times the number of infections there were in June. More than 1,000 people are dying from COVID every day. The Delta variant is driving the national average caseload back up to nearly 150,000 infections a day, which is 13 times what it was in June. Today I'm taking care of a man in his mid 40s. He's unvaccinated who's an otherwise healthy person who's now in here dying with COVID. While the country is seeing more than 1,100 deaths from COVID every day, that's up 131% in just the last month. As this holiday weekend nears its end, many people are going to be hitting the roadways to head home, but AAA is urging drivers to stay safe and be responsible. Last year, over this four day holiday weekend, there were 502 crashes in Oklahoma. Six people died, five of those were alcohol and or drug related. So have a plan, have a designated driver, plan an Uber. According to AAA, last year over this four day holiday weekend, there were 502 crashes in Oklahoma. Six people died. Five of those were alcohol or drug related. We know that many of you are going to be firing up the grills today and what's Labor Day without the smell of cookouts and bonfires. But fire crews say you do need to practice caution when you're celebrating. They say they typically see more calls over the holiday. And another big thing to remember, stay hydrated. Always keep an eye out for your friends. You know, if you see them kind of getting dizzy, uh, feeling like they need to get some some colder air, you need to watch out for them. Another big reminder, of course, never drink and drive. They say you should be especially careful when you're out on the roads today. 
Honestly, looks like the perfect temperature to get out and enjoy your Labor Day. If you want to let us know how you are celebrating and observing the day, you can always share your pictures and videos with us on our U Local Arkansas Facebook page. Just join the group, share your pictures, and they could appear right here on 4029. Local news will continue now over on the Arkansas CW or anytime on 4029TV.com. But here on ABC, Good Morning America starts right now. We'll see you in Live, just about 25 minutes local, for an update. Late breaking. This is 4029 News Sunrise on the Arkansas CW.